Welcome back. Let's continue the conversation now on the Safe School Initiative in Nigeria. I'm now being joined on the program by Halima Ilya, who is the National Coordinator Financing Safe Schools in Nigeria. Thank you very much, Madam, for joining us on the program. Let me start by asking you what you make of that UNICEF report that I must confess is quite sobering. Okay. Thank you very much for having me on um, Actually, let me even set the children right. It's not Safe Schools Initiative. Mm. I would like to change the narrative. You know, the Safe Schools Initiative was actually launched in 2024 mm. to address the issues of um, victims of attacks. That was the Chibok incidents where 276 children were abducted. Mm. So the Safe Schools Initiative was launched to enable the victims to continue with their education unhindered. Mm. So um, alongside, I think that was just to address that issue. So in 2019, the president, the federal government signed the safe school ratification document, signaling the country's commitment to its implementation, where we have 118 member countries. And the issues of safe schools attacks on education was reoccurring for a lot of stakeholders. In 2019, the Ministry of Finance convened a high-level meeting to chat a way forward on how to address the issue on a more holistic and sustainable basis and to create innovative sources of funding. So in that meeting, the UN envoy, that is um, Golden Brown, was in the meeting Mm -hmm. Alongside with other partners, it was a high-level meeting, actually. So it was resolved at Ministry of Finance to develop a compact, a costed plan for the country. So quickly, in 2022, the, the, the Secretariat in Finance was set up mm. and was saddled with the responsibility to develop a national plan under my leadership. So we pulled members from critical agencies we have members from the Nigerian Governors Forum, Nigerian Police, Ministry of Education, the DSS, NSCDC, and the Defense Headquarters. The Headquarters representing the Defense Intelligence Agencies and the entire Nigerian Armed Forces. Mm. So we came together and developed a national plan between 2023 to 2026. The plan itself has a total investment size of 144.8 billion. So the plan was actually launched in 2022, December, mm. alongside with other policy documents that is the minimum standard on safe schools. So this plan was launched in Ministry of Finance by the two ministers from education and finance. This shows the collaboration and the synergy within the MDAs. So by 2023, we started implementation of the plan. Mm. We we're able to establish and flag off the first safe schools response, national response coordination center. That is the first in Nigeria of its kind, manned by all the security agencies. The essence of that safe schools coordination center is to disseminate information and also for quick response to detective and responsive agencies. And we intend to replicate same at the state level and at the local government level to integrate the centers to the national center. So right now, presently, we're working on harmonizing the SOP of the center. You might not feel the impact um, currently mm. uh, because we started the full implementation late last year and um, the federal government gave provision or released 15 billion to the implementing agencies for implementation. So where we are currently is the security agencies have mainstream safe schools, which is the first phase of implementation, mm -hmm. have mainstream safe schools, have built capacity of their personnel across the country on the safe schools program. 
And um, recently, I'm sure you witnessed that of um, police, where they um, commissioned 200 motorcycles that would be deployed to states. Mm. They already have a um, police safe school squad. And these officers have been trained, and all the DPOs across the country have also been trained. So that capacity building is very important because, um, you know, the safe schools were looking at it, 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 an entire different strategy and approach to see how we can strengthen the security, detection, deterrence and response capability. And um, we're embarking on the second phase of the implementation. We hope to have a national campaign so we, we invited all critical stakeholders, including the Nollywood, the private sector, would all be in that meeting. Mm. The essence of the meeting is to come together, let's with CSOs and NGOs. We want Nigerians to own their project. We want to embark on a nationwide campaign. So it's a planning, strategic planning stage for it to be very effective. Then we intend to visit communities that is the most at risk communities in the country and the most at risk schools. We have written to all the 36 states. We have addressed about 19 governors and we begin to see the commitment from the state government. And the state government have also made provision in 2024 for the safe schools program in their uh, budget. So we wrote a letter to them for the state to have a level of ownership of the project to select the most at-risk schools, which will lead us to most at-risk communities. Then the intervention will be tailored towards those most at-risk community and most at-risk schools. So what we did was collectively the technical working group, we had a meeting and we resolved at having in the three senatorial zones to have five primary schools, five secondary school, five senior secondary school, and one tertiary institution to start on pilots. So mm. each state is expected to provide that information. Uh, so, so how many states are you looking at starting with? We're looking at starting with 18 states on pilots. So the 18 states are classified as the very high risk states. And this very high risk states, we chose the very high risk state based on the reoccurrence of attacks and also the peculiarities of those states, the threats because we have to do threats analysis and the information we got, we were guided, the decision was actually guided by the security agencies and the intelligence agencies. So we intend to start with the 18 state, but we've got a response from virtually almost all the states by furnishing us with information of the most at risk states. Now, now but, sorry to interject, w would Kaduna and Sokoto states be among those states? Because in that UN report uh, now, the, the report actually raised concerns that not much uh, has actually been done in terms of guaranteeing safer schools in Kaduna and Sokoto State. And these are two states that have been badly impacted as well. Yeah, absolutely. Kaduna, especially, I'm in touch with the, with the, um, the, the, the leadership in Kaduna. I even had a conversation with the permanent secretary and um, we told them we're coming. We're, we've um, written a letter and um, we hope to be in Kaduna very soon. And all the implementing agencies have identified topics that we're going to address when visiting some of these communities. And we intend to build security resilience of the entire host community and getting them into the security architecture by training them on intelligence. So we have done that. We have, um, we have shortlisted the topics and um, we want to even forward it to NOA for interpretation into local dialogues so that it can be more um, impactful. We have series of trainings, we have levels of trainings, I mean, we have for the schools communities and we have for the entire host community and we intend to train the children and the parents which covers the host community, I mean the schools community on psychosocial support and um, we are working on the materials which we hope to visit Kaduna very soon, including Sokoto is actually shortlisted. Now, you, you look at that UN report, one very sobering statistics from, from that report 
uh, for me is the one that says, as of 2021, 1 million children were afraid of returning to school. And in 2022, 2020, I should say, around 11,500 schools were closed due to attacks. Now, that's according to Policy Weekly by, by next year. Now, you look at these children who are afraid to return to school. The, the report says 1 million, but the truth is that it could be more than that. Is there anything that your organization is doing apart from ensuring schools are safe? What are you doing to convince parents to send their children back to school? Okay, I, I like that question. Because if you look at the national plan, it's a robust plan. And um, it's whole society approach. Everybody is a stakeholder. You that is throwing these questions, you are equally a, strict, um, a, a stakeholder in whatever government is doing. We have a plan specifically that will take care of those children out of school. So presently what we did was we wrote, we designed a template to the schools, to the affected, I mean the states, to the affected states. And we are receiving um, inputs from those states to give us data of children that are out of schools. So we're going to use that data to enroll them into Unity Colleges, moving those children from volatile location to safer locations. And we're working in partnership closely, very closely, as a critical stakeholder, Ministry of Education. Like just yesterday, I got a report of those states that have responded. So we'll have a subcommittee that would look at the numbers of those that we can quickly enroll into schools. The essence is to get those children back in schools to safer locations for them to continue with their education. So I think it's a very good step the government has taken. Um, you know, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the steps. Mm. So we have taken the steps and we surely get there. W would your organization be, uh, say, be involved now in, in the reconstruction of, of some of these schools? Because some of these schools are in, in terrible shape. You look at Kuriga, the, the last incident. Of course, that school is in a very horrible state. It's not even fenced at all. W would your organization be, be involved now in, in reconstruction of schools? Yes, definitely. In the plan, we have provision for... Um, physical infrastructure that is fencing of schools. So what we intend to do is, like for instance, let's take Benway State. Mm. We were in Benway. Benway have submitted the list of vulnerable schools and we advise them to conduct a survey. Let us have an idea of how much it will take to fence some of the schools. So the plan, looking at the gaps in funding, the federal government, the state government, and the local government. We have to look inwards. Let us have tidy our house by getting the local contents first before we extend to, to partners to support us. Let us show commitment, political will, and seriousness towards what we are doing. So we have done that. The government has played its role. The state government has always made contribution um, in, I mean, uh, budgetary provision in the 2024 budget. And we intend to reach out to interventionaries agencies. And as part of the discussion we had with the partners, we realized that these interventionaries agencies have funds lying. So we intend to, um, you know, to reach out to UBEB to support in the infrastructure mm. to support in fencing some of the schools. So as we're coming with the intervention, the, play, the state is playing its own role. The interventionist agencies are playing their own role. I think with that, we should be able to achieve the goals and objectives of the entire plan itself. So how deep is your pocket to carry out some of these projects? Have your partners been responsive in, in terms of donations? Well, yes. Like the meeting, strategic meeting we're holding, we've reached out to the partners, we've reached out to NGOs, and um, we're seeing commitment. But I want you to have one thing in mind. Before any partner takes you serious, mm. there has to be a level of commitment coming from our own part. So right now, like I mentioned earlier, the implementation, we started full implementation late last year. So it's still work in progress. Hmm. By the time we got to a certain level, 
that is when we will now call partners and we're also you know like the world bank projects you have the agile design for the adolescents i just mentioned the transfer program to you mm. so for those transfer program definitely there has to be a cost tied to it so we intend to reach out to the world bank to support in the area of scholarship so already the partners are responding which is um, mm. uh, you know showing commitment to support what we're doing in the country this is a plan is a national plan and we're at the implementation stage and the Kurigal community even the armed forces they're doing their bits from the engagement I had with the defense chief of defense they're also working towards ensuring the entire community is being saved mm. because in the plan those communities that are porous with no security presence at all we intend to have like a military formation around those communities and also train the vigilantes and the hunters we have specific trainings for the vigilantes mm. and hunters in the community because the locals understand the terrain more than you and Absolutely. I like what happened in Kaduna these people the community they saw them they were in the community I think they even spent a night they passed a night there mm. but the community were where you know they couldn't know what to do they were helpless but with the levels of training we intend to carry out this training that is why we want to embark on a nationwide campaign to sensitize Nigerians to synthesize the community using the N um, NOA National Orientation Agency platform we reach out to all the 774 local governments all right, I think we just have to leave it there. Halima Ilya, a National Coordinator, Financing Safe Schools in Nigeria. Thank you very much, madam, for coming on the program. We thank you so very much for your time. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Well, I'm afraid that's how much we can take on the program this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.